Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. There are some voices out there that saying that the VA has a plan to add a disability rating, but they're saying that this disability rating addition is not going to help those that have been afflicted with the illness. So I wanted to dive into this. One, to bring awareness to the condition. Two, to see what they're talking about. Could this be something that could happen you know, for other conditions? And what exactly can we expect from the VA? So I found this article on military.com. Wanted to share it with you here today. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I truly appreciate it. And look, here's the deal. The more of us that hit the thumbs up and watch the video, that's what pushes it out to more and increases its reach. It does two things. One, it can land in the hands of somebody who actually needs the information, which is helping our brothers and sisters. The second piece is, it shows that we're actually paying attention as a community, right? As a veteran sphere, right? Veteran, spouse, surviving spouse, dependents, children, all that stuff together. That we're paying attention to what's going on that affect and impact us in our lives. It's an important piece. If you want to support the channel in other ways, consider being a member. You can go to the homepage. You'll see the highlighted members there and a join button. Thank you so much to all you members. I truly appreciate your support. All right, let's jump into it. The headline here is critics say VA's plan to add disability rating for rare lung condition won't help afflicted veterans. Now, I think this is about the bronchiolitis, if I remember right. Uh, so let's dive, dive into it here and see what they have to say. The Department of Veterans Affairs plans to create a diagnostic code to ensure that veterans with constrictive bronchiolitis, an illness linked to burn pits and other airborne pollutants, can receive a disability rating and uh, related compensation for the condition. Well, that's that's probably all good so far. Moving on. But the proposal published September 12th, which we talked about this a while back, September 12th, it's in the Federal Register, uh, doesn't add any new standards or criteria for evaluating veterans for the difficult to diagnose disease. An omission, critics say, will shortchange veterans. Now, here's the thing. It is in the Federal Register that should still be within the uh, comment period of which then uh, hopefully the critics have chimed in with regard to their concerns in the comment period. So typically when you see a, a change happening in the VA, they'll throw it through the Federal Register, they'll gather comments, they may or may not take those things into consideration before they actually move forward and establish the new uh, rule or, or element in which they are uh, uh, functioning there. So with that, let's move on here. Um, I want to see, I'm going to click on this and see if I can find out if the um, comment period is still open. And yes, it does. So it says this document has a comment period that ends seven days in seven days on October 15th, 2024. And they have received a whole 53 comments. So 53 comments were received. You can view posted comments. You can submit a public comment. I will uh, put a link to the uh, Federal Register to this page uh, for you to add um, whatever public comment you would like. Uh, so let's jump back to the article here. So uh, moving on, constrictive bronchiolitis is one of 23 dise diseases listed in the PACT Act as a presumed condition that uh, that had been caused uh, by exposure to burn pits and particulate matter inhaled by troops who served in Afghanistan, Iraq, and uh, elsewhere overseas as a presumptive condition. It is supposed to be fast-tracked in the VA's disability claim system, with affected veterans having an easier time applying for and receiving compensation uh, for the condition. Sure, what a presumptive condition does is it eliminates the need for you, the veteran, to provide a nexus, a link between your condition and your time in service. You do not need to prove that link. Instead, you prove, I served in this location that has this presumptive condition listed, and I have 
my diagnosis of that condition. So I've proven that I served in the location, I've proved that I have the condition, and I proved that uh, I'm diagnosed for it, right? So um, the condition on the list of presumed conditions. So uh, let's move on. Uh, it was it was the only illness listed in the legislation that did not have a diagnostic code. Now, that might sound weird, but that has happened um, often. There's, there's, I mean, there are some out there that uh, don't utilize the, they don't have their own diagnostic code. So there's some out there like that. For example, um, GERD. GERD is a great one to use. GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, did not have its own diagnostic code. And the VA used to utilize hiatal hernia's diagnostic code and rate off of that rating schedule. They did a revamp on the rating schedule for digestive systems, and they changed how they rate GERD. They gave it its own diagnostic code. However, they did not give it its own rating schedule. Instead, it says GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, diagnostic code, whatever it is, C, diagnostic code for esophageal stricter, and rate it against that schedule. So um, it's not uncommon to see the lack of a diagnostic code or the utilization of a different diagnostic code for rating purposes. So Let's move on and see what this uh, moves on to say here. So again, it was the only illness listed in the legislation that did not have a diagnostic code in the VA schedule for rating disabilities, meaning that afflicted veterans could not receive a disability rating specifically for the disease. Instead, the VA has been awarding a disability rating to affected veterans under closely related respiratory conditions. Under the proposed federal rule, constrictive bronchiolitis would have its own diagnostic code of 6605 and to be evaluate and to evaluate a veteran for the illness and related disability the VA plans to continue using pulmonary function tests and cardiopulmonary exercise tests which look at the lungs heart and circulatory system but medical experts and advocates say these tests are not sufficient to diagnose constrictive bronchiolitis, scarring and inflammation of the lungs, uh, small airways, the smallest airways, and they have been hoping for a new diagnostic criteria. So from my understanding and those of you out there that uh, have dealt with this, my understanding is the only true way is through some sort of a, a biopsy uh, of the lung uh, to see if, uh, if, if this is uh, something that you are ailing from. Moving on, there is a uh, quotation here. The small airways have been referred to for dec decades as the silent zone of the lungs, meaning that if you have scarring of the lungs, you can, you can detect it, is what it says. If you have asthma, you can detect it. But if you have something strictly limited to the small airways, it's very difficult to detect. Dr. Robert Miller, a professor at the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, who was among the first medical providers to diagnose the condition in U.S. service members, said during an interview with Military.com, Again, you can go to the Federal Register and you can make a public comment. Because of its difficulty to diagnose, advocates had hoped the VA would not only include new evaluation criteria, but would establish centers of excellence in the VA hospital system with experts who understand the illness. The VA has six post-deployment cardio, uh, cardio, cardiopulmonary evaluation network clinics, but Miller said they are more focused on research than patient care. Those of us who have seen these patients have a pretty good sense of who is likely to have the condition and who is not, Miller said. Veterans who have weighed in on the Federal Register's comment page agree. Julie uh, Tomaska, a Minnesota Air National Guard veteran who was diagnosed with constrictive bronchiolitis after receiving a lung biopsy, called the current evaluation process uh, for the illness at VA flawed. 
To make meaningful change, the VA must update its disability rating criteria to include biopsy-proven constrictive bronchiolitis and invest in establishing specialized care centers for development-related respiratory diseases, uh, she wrote. When asked last month about the proposed rule and its absence of new diagnostic criteria, VA Secretary Dennis McDonough said the department will review the input given by the public and consider it when finalizing the rule. Again, if you want to make a public comment, you can do so, but you only have a few days left. He added that 75% of veterans who have filed a claim for constrictive bronchiolitis have received a disability rating for it but he did not provide the level of an average rating. He also declined to comment on the rule, noting that the administrative process is ongoing. The Administrative Procedure Act lays out lays this out quite clearly of what I can say and when I can say it, and I want and I want to not compromise that because it's been a long time coming, McDonough said during a press conference. And in fact, we caught the tail end of that press conference um, and uh, recorded that on a live uh, for folks to hear. I want to make sure uh, that we get it done right for those veterans who are suffering from this. Miller and the advocacy group Burn Pits 360, whose co-founder, former Army Captain Leroy Torres, has constrictive bronchiolitis, noted the VA's own researchers recommended against using pulmonary function tests to evaluate for constrictive bronchiolitis and point out that the new rule ignores those recommendations. The VA's current ruling dismisses these findings and continues to prioritize outdated and unreliable PFT, uh, which is the pulmonary function test, uh, results as the main criteria for disability ratings. This uh, negligence undermines the very expertise that the VA sought to enhance care for veterans, eroding trust in the VA's commitment to evidence-based policy. Burn Pits 360 advocates wrote in a press release September 17th, the public comment period for the proposed rule ends October 15th. So, again, I'm going to drop that uh, in the description, and I will try to put that in as a comment and get that up there as well. With that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.